I encapsulate most of the highlands of Scotland and, and the county of Murray, which for me was an interesting exercise in learning about rural matters. All my ministry till that point had been within a, an urban environment. In fact, the thought of moving into a rural community, which is what we did when we moved to Upper Feely, filled me with a certain apprehension, not least the fact that there are no streetlights. But that awareness has begun to grow over the last six years, that we're not living here with rural issues, we're just living with rural life. And as a church which still takes seriously its territoriality, that it, it exists for the people in the community it serves, then much of our ministry has been about developing ways for the church to be where the communities are, rather than expecting the communities to come to us. Some wonderful experiences going on throughout Scotland, but in my own diocese, the, the sense of church services taking place midweek, because that's when the mart is, or midweek because that's when the minibus brings the, the elderly down from the upcountry to the local supermarket. Being flexible in what we perceive as being available for the community. Much of rural life is caught up with how far it is to get anything. I have members of congregations that travel nearly 120 miles just to come to receive their communion. And therefore that does have an effect and we have to think seriously about that. It's really quite sad when someone says they don't come to church regularly because they can't afford the fuel to do so. So surely that's the point at which the church might just begin to think maybe we should go to them. Many of the issues of rural life are the same issues everyone else faces, how to get from A to B, how to afford the things they need. And we as a church in the rural communities are trying to work, yes, ecumenically, but also recognizing that in some communities we are the last church there. And often we have the buildings that the community could use. We have the largest building. I wouldn't say the warmest building, but the largest building. And we have the, the space to allow people to meet together. I've seen some wonderful experiences, wonderful examples of local post offices being opened in churches. Examples of like the Highland Blast, where the community comes together to share in its culture using our church buildings. What we must get away from is simply seeing the church as something that happens on a Sunday or something that happens once a week. It needs to be part of the, the living, breathing life of our rural communities. And we'll only do that if we have the courage to ask those communities what it might be they need. Not to tell them what it is they need, but to listen to what they have to say. So many of those working in our rural churches are actually asking those questions. Asking those questions of the schools, asking those questions of the community centres, asking those questions of those people who do feel isolated by distance and sometimes isolated by their own culture. Got many people have moved into Scotland into the rural communities to escape from urban life and then feel frightened by rural life. People coming out into the rural communities because they want to set their own agenda and discovering a, a very different agenda. So the church can often be the mediator. The highlands themselves are beautiful places. We know of the mountains and we know of the lochs, but what the church is also discovering and rediscovering and trying to enable our communities to discover that we have the mountains, we have the glens, but we also have a loving, growing, nurturing church community there to serve the people, the people who choose to be rural Scotland.